Hey everybody, welcome to Fly Tying Tuesdays. I'm Brady and today we're gonna to show you how to tie a compare done. So I'm gonna start my thread on my hook. I have a TMCO 102Y, it's an awesome dry fly hook. Comes in odd sizes, this is the 17. And then my thread is a UTC 70 denier. This is the olive brown color, a nice dark color. I'm gonna tie a brown variation of the Comparadon today. All right, so now that we got our thread started there, we can bring our deer hair in. So I'm using the Wopsy. This is the short, fine deer hair from Wopsy. It's an awesome product. Lends itself nicely to Comparadons because of how fine it is. Super soft, easy to work with. And it's got some nice color options as well. This is the dark done color. They have a light done as well as some others. So I'm just going to take my, my hank there. You can kind of use your hook gauge or your hook gape to gauge how much hair you need. And we'll pull out all the under fur that's there. You use your dubbing brush to clean it out and get all those fibers out. Okay, once we're happy with how that went, drop those in our hair stacker. I'm using a small hair stacker today because it makes it easier using these short fibers than a larger hair stacker can be challenging. Get them stacked. And then we can pull them out, nice and stacked tips there. You can see they got the nice black coloration on the tips. I'm actually going to pull it out of the hair stacker reverse of how I usually would um, because I'm going to tie the tips in facing forward on this fly as opposed to like an elk hair caddis where they would be pointed rearward. So we have our tips aligned there pretty well. We're going to measure out our tie-in point here using the hook shank. So right about that length of that hook shank there and we can transfer that on up to our tie-in point be just a couple of hook eyes back you can see that there make sure it's where we want it and then we'll go ahead and secure it nice and snug lots of tension and we can work a couple of wraps backward here can go ahead and clip out our butt sections. If you hold on to them, it can make it easier to trim them. Come down and under and clip it as close as we can without clipping that thread out. And we can always kind of come in and thin it out as well to help manage your abdomen. go at an angle because that'll create a transition for us and assist in that profile. See I still missed some under fur in there. Okay so then we're going to do some wraps to kind of position it right where we want it here. Don't let it spin on you. You can do the underhand move so that you can kind of keep them on top while working forward on it. Locking it as you go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull all that hair up and back. Try to get all those fibers. There we are, and we're going to sneak right in front of it and create a thread dam. OK, 
Okay, so now we got our wing set. I'm gonna work right on back, cover this all up, clean it up, kinda secure it down and work on that taper here quickly. And then I'm gonna bring in some Coke de Leon. This is the medium pardo from Whiting. They make an awesome Coke de Leon. So we'll take some of those fibers, kind of work them so that they're 90 degrees off the stem here. And that'll help us pinch them and keep the tips aligned. And you can always stack them after as well. There we go, so something like that coming off. And then if you grab a hank of them and keep them that way, just pull them right off. And you have fairly even tips there to tie in now. Okay, so we're gonna measure that out as well. About the shank of the body, maybe just slightly shorter, because I always tend to over tie Tie my tail's a little too long usually. But we'll secure those right on the back here. And you can use that material to help smooth that transition up onto where that deer hair bump is. It's about that excess. And then we can go ahead and dub our body. Lots of color options for this mayfly imitation. I'm gonna do just kind of a natural brown today. This is a interesting color, SLF squirrel dubbing in brown. A little different than what you might see traditionally done on this fly. Usually it's a super fine. Just really like this color combination and the materials that are mixed into this natural synthetic dubbing. So a nice tight dubbing noodle here, keeping it fairly thin as well, getting a little too thick here, back that off. Okay, so we'll do some starting wraps on it here right at the back and begin to work our way forward. And you can always work on that noodle as you go. Don't want my tails going downwards, so let's make sure we're out ahead of that. Take this on on up. So most most popularly tied in uh, either bluing olive or PMD colors. So a, an olive thorax, an abdomen, or a, a pale yellow. Are very deadly variations of this fly during different times of the year. Also enjoy this black color a lot, or this brown color a lot. I'll just keep dubbing on up. I'm going to use it to create kind of a, a backstop for that hair. So we'll do a couple wraps. It's getting a little bulbous on me though. I'm going to thin it out. And wax helps a lot in doing this. Using just the Loon High Tack wax, I use it quite often. Just the wax that I keep on my bench typically. Lots of good options out there though. So we'll create that backstop like I was saying here. And then when I'm doing this, I always kind of like to try and almost overlap wraps underneath just to make sure that I'm covering up underneath the hair wing really well. 
you do one wrap forward, then sometimes you can kind of miss a gap. So we jump in front now and we're going to use this dubbing to help prop the wing up as well. And then the dubbing behind is going to keep it from laying back too far on us. It takes a little practice, but it's not that difficult of a fly. Just have to be, you know, fairly careful as you're working through it. So make sure all that deer hair is pulled up and back. And cross right in front of it a few times. Like so, and then we can work our dubbing noodle forward to finish off the body. And see that this dubbing just makes a super picky buggy looking pattern. Typically best used for nymphs, but I really like it. And we'll adapt it to other flies as well. Okay, there we are. So now we'll give her a whip finish. Maybe, there it is. And then we can come in and kind of get that wing positioned how we want it. And to do that, we're just gonna kind of fan it. up and out here. It's a really great fly, very adaptive. It's uh, an awesome imitation for mayflies that'll ride low to the surface with that wing up on top as an emerging insect. And I'm just gonna kinda trim out some of them picky fibers from that SLF dubbing. And if you trapped a butt end of a deer hair, you can always pull that out with some hackle pliers. Okay, I have one in here. There we are. But there's a nice completed comparadon.